game begin. Game over. Welcome everyone to uh, Tech and Toys this week. If you're not a boomer like me and don't have a bunch of cartridges, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a Raspberry Pi or a Retro Pi. We're going to do a lot of Pi stuff here, so let's get rocking. First, what you're going to end up doing is going to Raspberry Pi OS, and you're going to go ahead and download this nice little thing called the Pi Imager. Entire point of the Pi Imager is to image your Pi, and you go ahead and put in your little SD card and choose OS. And this used to actually be a super pain in the um, posterior region, if you will. But RetroPie actually went ahead and added, instead of being able to do Ubuntu or anything else, you go onto your emulation and game OS. Ooh. And then RetroPie is right there. So at this point, you have no reason not to do this at all. And I'm actually doing a Raspberry Pi 4 slash 400. You have your other options there as well. We're going to click on that. Click choose storage. You guys are gonna be so good at imaging stuff if you keep watching these videos, by the way. You're gonna be the bestest, the goodest. Hmm, all existing data is gonna be deleted. I wish I could do that with my childhood. But you go ahead and image that. <laughs> Somebody's gotta make this weird. <laughs> and we'll let this write for a while. Now what I can't tell you guys how to do is where to get ROMs. There's the internet, you can figure it out. But legally, if you own the cartridge, you can use the ROMs. If you don't own the cartridge, I don't know you. So we'll just go with that. But I've got some classics on here that we'll eventually put on there. You know, Legend of Zelda, Gold Cartridge, Super Metroid, My Bay, and Final Fantasy III. If you don't own these, that's your problem. You should own them. You can buy gold or buy retro video games. If you haven't looked at those prices recently, you should. What? <laughs> so we'll let this load, and I'm going to sit here awkwardly. On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet, cyberspace, set free. Hello, virtual Jesus reality. Flat. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. But anyway, so once you go through there, you are now imaged with your Pi Retro, aka Retro Pi on there. So you go ahead and take that stick out. Pull out that little USB drive and then come over to your RetroPie. Of course, I had to get the little Nintendo case. Very important. So if you're wondering eventually how to add uh, games to here, you just open it up and... Different tutorial for that. Don't worry. But anyway, once the card's in there, go ahead and turn it on. This is the fun part where we get to stare at the screen because I didn't feel like getting a capture card. Maybe we'll... Uh, We'll review one of those later. And there we go. I am supposed to have my controller too. My, where's this one from? The Buffalo Pad. Not classy, but it gets the job done. There's some other company, it's like 8-bit something that actually makes decent USB ones. This is not one of them. I actually speed run, so I only use actual things. I'm not an emulator fan personally, just because frame rates are different and I'm an elitist. And the beauty with a RetroPie is most of this is kind of self-working. There's one or two little things from here you're going to have to do and then you'll be good to go. And welcome. Hold the A button on your device to configure it. If you don't know your alphabet, again, can't help you. But I'm going to go ahead and hit or hold A. Reading is important. And then we go ahead and set all this up. So Contra code, what is it? Up, down, left, right. Start, select, A, B, what is that one? X, Y, left shoulder and right shoulder. And then if they don't exist, you just hold anything and to bypass it. Already taken. There you go, nothing, not defined, not defined. Nice thing with the RetroPie, I think you can go almost all the way up to PlayStation 3, which is super nice, and we're not gonna define this. Or should define it. It's going to tell you you should, but I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. And then we're going to go back. And then I think quit. And restart. And then once you get this configuration screen, you're going to go ahead and pull out your little drive. I'm sorry, you actually keep it on. I lied. Don't listen to me. I said pull out. 
definitely don't. And then what you're actually gonna do is get a, another card and pop it in here. And this is where it actually is gonna auto configure a bunch of stuff for you. You're gonna plug that drive in. So you put your drive in there and what you're gonna do is just make a single folder, all lowercase, one word, RetroPie. And what the Pi is gonna do once you plug this drive back in is it's gonna go ahead and do all the configuration and then set up all the uh, folder paths and everything else, which is super convenient. So we'll plug this in, do, 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 do. And then I usually wait like a minute or so. One minute later. It's probably configured by now. And then just go ahead and pull it out. And then you plug it back in. There's a lot of pulling out and plugging back in. <laughs> That's funny. It's not funny. And then you go ahead and open up that, what was just the RetroPie, and it goes ahead and puts the BIOS, the config fire, ah, files, and then the ROMs. And then here's just where you go get specific systems and then just drop your ROMs in these files, folders, if you will. But yeah, I mean, you got Atari, Game Gear, some of these I don't even know at all. Neo Geo, that was slightly before my time. N64, PC Engine, but I believe, I wanted to say it has all the way up to PlayStation 3 on here. If they don't, you can go ahead and just put a folder on there. Um, depending on where you find said files for emulation, you'll be able to get the other things that you need. And then once that's all done, go ahead and uh, put your files on there. I actually have a pre-configured one over here that I'm going to go ahead and use. I put some classics on, some bangers, as the, uh, the Zoomers will say. Let me plug that in. And then sometimes you restart here, sometimes you don't. Cool. And then once you plug it in, it goes ahead and uh, auto configures everything for you. That's why you put the specific ROMs in the specific folders. And I actually put on some Super Nintendo, some Nintendo 64 and Nintendo. So under Nintendo, I've got Contra, which you have to put on there. You guys wanna know a little secret? Um, Jack actually found when he was trying to build his own decks, he went deep into Pancake Swap and found in a super, super low directory that just says Contra. So next time you're on uh, Pancake Swap, if you do the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, watch what it does. Devs hide little funny things. But, and then we got Legend of Zelda, so the little gold cartridge right there. And 64, I think we just got, was that Mario Kart? And then on Super NES, we got Legend of Zelda, Chrono Trigger, Mega Man X2, and Super Metroid. And go ahead and just hit go. And we'll go ahead and load it. You gotta be a little bit patient, but you essentially have every single retro game you could think of, so just deal with it. But there you go. That's how you set up a Raspberry Pi. And then if you guys wanna pick up the super handy dandy little case, I'm a big fan of this. I think this was like 12 bucks at Micro Center. And then you've got all your USB ports in the front, power on the side, audio if you wanna run separate audio, if you don't wanna go over HDMI, and that's pretty much it. But thank you guys for tuning in. If there's anything you guys specifically wanna see us review, definitely put it in the comments below. If you wanna mock me, comments below. I'd definitely do that. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. Also, smash the, what is that? The subscribe and like button. Definitely do that. But bye for now.